Greetings, this is my guide to the Labyrinth of the Ancients, which is the first of the 24-man Crystal Tower raid series. This one is fairly straightforward. There are a few things you want to look out for, though. Let's get right into it. Before you get to fight any bosses, you'll have to fight your way through the Pools of Oblivion. Here you'll have to fight your way through three areas containing various easy-to-defeat ads. The only thing you really need to pay attention to here is to stand on the green platforms because periodically around them there'll be some purple goo that deals damage to anyone standing inside of it. DPS players do tend to take a little bit of damage here so healers look out. The first boss you'll have to defeat is the Bone Dragon and you'll have to defeat him a total of three times because he'll revive twice. Around the Bone Dragon there will be various skeletons spawning. While the Bone Dragon is alive, these will behave like normal adds. However, if the Bone Dragon dies and there's a corpse on the ground, the skeletons will try to run towards it and if they reach the Bone Dragon's corpse, they will explode in a big AoE. The best tactic for this boss is for the tank to pull the Bone Dragon to the far edge of the arena on the north side, still standing on the green platforms like before because the purple goo will keep spawning. And everyone else should then just focus down the Bone Dragon the skeletons if they spawn to make sure they don't reach the bone dragon's corpse and if they do reach the corpse the healer should be ready for some easy aoe healing once you've killed the bone dragon three times it will stay dead and you can move on next up you'll have to clear the walk of lament this is less of a test of your party's mechanics and more of a test of the alliance wide teamwork first of all you'll notice that there are three paths you can split up on each one of these paths needs at least one group on it, otherwise everyone else is unable to clear. The general strategy is to send Alliance A on the left, Alliance B in the middle, and Alliance C on the right side. The idea here is that in each of these areas there are two platforms. There's one platform that you can stand on, and one platform that the boss is on. If you look very closely, you'll see that some of the platforms have matching colors, however, on different sides. Basically, the entire mechanic is that your party has to keep at least four people standing on their platform to allow the other party on another side to attack their boss. In my experience here, it's best to be proactive and just keep standing on the platform, make sure there are four people, let your party know in case they don't know what's happening. However, usually you can just sit back, relax, and let the other frustrated duty roulette people handle all the shit talking. Because let me tell you, if Alliance A is not able to hit their boss because Alliance C is sleeping, then they will let them know. Apart from doing this very basic teamwork exercise, one way you can optimize this fight a little bit is as a tank, because you can pull the adds towards the platform of four people who are eager to do anything other than standing around, while the three players who are still in range of the boss can keep focusing him down. Once the boss corresponding to your platform's color has been defeated, you can move off the platform and the entire alliance will meet in the middle afterwards to go for the next boss. The next boss is Thanatos. This fight is really weird, probably my least favorite fight in the labyrinth. Basically only one alliance at a time is able to DPS the boss, starting with A, then B, then C. However, it's very rare these days that it actually even gets to Alliance C. Oftentimes, he's even defeated by Alliance A already. The two alliances currently not DPSing the boss will have to handle various adds and stop them from reaching the edge of the arena. And that's pretty much all you have to worry about here. Next up is the Walk of Fire. A similar theme as before, you'll have to split up into three groups, each one taking one of the bosses. All of the bosses have to be tanked as far apart as possible. Alliance A starts on the left, Alliance B takes the far one in the middle, and Alliance C takes the one on the right. I would recommend that Alliance B does the first pull, because they have to run through the two bosses. Once you've spread all the bosses, you can start DPSing them down. There will be two types of adds, the Allegan Balloons and the Allegan Napalm. The Allegan Napalm uh, will try to travel to the center of the arena where the Allegan Bomb is. It's very important that all players focus down the Allegan Napalm before it reaches the Allegan Bomb, because whenever an Allegan Napalm reaches the Allegan Bomb, there will be a big explosion rate white, and also the Allegan Bomb will grow in size and eventually kill everyone. The Allegan Balloons, on the other hand, will just behave like regular ads. Once your party has killed their boss, you can help out the other parties, and then once you're done, kill the Allegan Bomb in the center, and you'll have cleared the Walk of Fire. Moving on to the King Behemoth. Now this guy really only has one mechanic that you have to worry about, 
A few players will get a green looking marker above their head, which indicates that on top of their heads there will be meteor spawning. Now these deal, as far as I can tell, negligible damage, don't worry about carrying them outside of the raid or anything, just stand somewhere a few yarms away from the boss. You don't want to be too close, and you don't want to stack with other meteors. The idea here is that the players with the markers place meteors for other people to hide behind during the big meteor that the boss summons down. You can clearly see the King Behemoth channeling here. When you see that, just hide behind a rock and you'll be fine. Make sure not to hide behind a rock that's right below the boss, because if it's too close it will likely still get you killed. That's all the mechanics for the King Behemoth. Moving on to the last boss, Phlegaton. Now this one is my favorite just because it's always funny seeing new players fail the one mechanic that can get people killed in this. Around the boss there are three platforms that the alliance raid will have to spread out on. Usually the order is the same as before, alliance A left, B middle and C on the right side. At least once the boss will cast Ancient Flare at which point everyone has to run back to their platform. The idea here is that Every party needs to have at least four people on their platform before the cast finishes to raise a shield that will protect everyone. If there's not at least four people on one platform, the shield will not raise. Other than that, the boss's only casts are various AOEs that you should be able to dodge very easily. And as you can see right here, this is a good time to mess with your teammates a little bit if you're a healer. Uh, alternatively, you can also save them behind the barrier, which makes for a pretty cool moment. This was my guide to the Labyrinth of the Ancients. If this helped you, feel free to leave a like, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Now off you go and have a nice rest of your day.